dollar bill, yo. So one of the things that people may or may not know is we did some changes to armor recently. So why don't you talk about that, Alish? Yes. Uh, so based on uh, your guys' feedback, we went and um, changed armor from basically protecting against specific uh, specific types of damage, and we flipped it around, and now it is a progression. Um, so basically, that means everybody everybody starts with you know everybody has access to leather, <clears throat> but certain classes will have access to higher um, higher armor uh, types of armor, right? So. Um, I don't, you see, I didn't look at this before we, we got on there, um, but, uh, like, for example, Champion has access to Chain, right? So the Champion can wear Leather and Chain. Um, Templar, Knight, I believe, both can wear Plate. So, uh, they get access to Plate, Chain, and Leather. Um, you can gain access to the other types of, uh, armor through Minor Disciplines, but it's basically a progression. So if you only have access to leather and you want to wear a plate, it's going to cost you two minor dis discipline slots. Yep. Um, it doesn't require a passive to do. You just have to have the minor dis uh, discipline slotted in, and that will grant you um, the ability to, to use that. But you are paying the price in, in minor disciplines if, uh, if you want to wear a higher type of armor than your class has available. Okay. So. Um, anything else on that one? Um, I mean, that that's... The so high level. yeah, that the was level, that was that was the, your portion of it, and mine was refactoring uh, all the recipes, mm -hmm. which came as part of our general overall crafting station implementation. Right. Which I'm going to show you today. So this is many of you know this is our testing zone. I call it ground plane. This is where we put one of everything, so designers can generally come in here and play around with stuff and see what it looks like before it goes out to you. So. One of the new things you will notice is we don't have the little icon. This whole thing says mousey left. <laughs> that is that should be a uh, an icon with a little mouse showing the left clicker because we're going to get rid of the words out of there. They also all say one. Uh, so that, that just went in yesterday. And when you go to this tab, you'll now notice that you can load things out from your inventory straight here without having to go to the K screen. And if you go to the K screen, Survival trays also up here, and you can drag up here. Basically, you have two ways to put stuff in there now. Ha! Look, there's tooltips there. Oh, are there now? Good. Well, okay. we, we got a bug from QA last night that there was no tooltips. Okay. And I was like, wait a second. We didn't touch any of that. We... Tooltips tool are up in up in there. We like tooltips. Yep. I like knowing what stuff does. Oh, you know what we did in this thing is we flipped over the um, mm -hmm. your ultimates to the left. And uh, retaliates are over here. They were, I think, in the version that we have up now. They're over here on the right. Yeah, as part of five three. Um, we're moving all that stuff. concise. Correct. Yeah, we're moving that stuff around. <laughs> Ultimately, I think uh, Billy is going to move the ultimate over here to the left of the UI because uh, right now it's it's here underneath and you can't drag it. But eventually, that's going to a mode where you can just drag anything you want to around, and you don't you don't have to control it via going into here. Okay, so as you come in now and you go into your crafting UI, close out K in the background, you will notice that all the recipes are gone. Not all of them, just most of them. <laughs> yes. So they are now gated behind skill tree advancement. So one of the challenges we've had this whole time is we have had everybody gets every single recipe and then they're curious when they fail why it's failing on them because they have no skills and they were never supposed to have those recipes. So this is what your standard recipes are for a player who has spent no time um, training. Right, so you've got the basic armor, basic weapons. Oh, basic toxins. Looks like we're still missing an icon for that one. We'll have to get on Lars to get us a little poison vial for the poison toxin and basic deeds for the EK for all the crafting stations. Because now, when you approach a crafting station, and you'll notice we have all the crafting stations over here, you guys may have seen them before in uh, um, one of the write-ups. One of the write-ups we show all these guys. Basically, here's all of the different types of crafting stations. And when you go up to a crafting station, let's go ahead, this is the general one, and you're gonna find this guy, the basic crafting table. He's going to exist in the beachhead. And you'll notice now all of a sudden I have intermediate recipes. So I've got intermediate components which are metal billet and wooden board. 
and they require non-basic ore, and the wooden board requires non-basic wood, which basically means you can't use not wood or slag in these recipes. And then those are all parts of the new intermediate tier of weapons. So you're saying it's not not wood wood. It's, yes. What's funny is how often we struggle over words. Yes, indeed. That, that is a good story we should tell. Yeah, so when we're like, okay, we use the word premium uh, at one point in right. there. We don't like premium. And we don't like premium because premium implies that you have to pay for it. Which you don't. Which so. you don't. And we just don't want to cross that line because we don't want people getting confused and getting the wrong idea. We tried the word pure, but that That's did... not a good word. Named? And then it's like, well, what the hell does named mean right. versus is not like named? Is slag not a name then? I don't, yeah. I don't know. Is not wood and slag not names? Cobblestone? I, I guess that's kind right. of a name. How about not not wood wood? <laughs> right. So then we tried it's not slag. Not slag. That's great. Not slag that or. Good. So not would work until you do it on something like. Not wood. Not wood. So then it's not not wood wood. And not cobblestone stone, which is ridiculous. So what we've come up with where we're sticking now is non-basic wood. Um, so, yeah, basic resources. Uh, and that's the very first question right there. Basic is going to be cobblestone, slag, and not wood. Right? Those are just, those are our basic resources. Um, <clears throat> unless that is too confusing. I hope that's not too confusing. Well, I mean. Because non-basic fits, fits great in all of those recipes. Right. Um, so you'll notice I got back in here by hitting the alt key. And when I do that, it doesn't, I need to actually interact with the crafting station to get those intermediate recipes. Why don't you talk about uh, where the intermediate recipes fall in terms of. Yeah, sure. So uh, the intermediate, intermediate recipes were added there uh, basically to, to sort of introduce you to the idea of using multiple subcomponents to craft stuff. Uh, and in terms of their strength, they are uh, a little better than um, they're experimentable for one, uh, and they're a little better than a little better to pretty close to the the lowest level of um, uh, advanced uh, but weapons. So, the, what stats are experimentable? Because that's important. We didn't we didn't give them the full stat packages. Right. You can primarily experiment on uh, what do we what do we do with that? We gave them damage and uh, PCM. Right. Okay. Yeah, those right. are the only two things you can experiment on those. And the PCM range, I believe, bottoms out at zero rather than allowing you to go negative. Right. Like the yes. That's weapons. that's the important part too. Right. So I mean, this, these the intermediate weapons are always going to be, you're always going to get a better result with an intermediate weapon than a basic weapon, even if you just completely you know get the worst get terrible results every time it's still going to be a better result in terms of both damage out and power co cost multiplier so it, it behooves you to make an inter inter intermediate weapon as soon as it's available to you you know as soon as you, as soon as you can as soon as you better. can basically get the stuff to make uh basically two metal billets which is going to be 18 copper iron basically 18 non-basic ore mm -hmm. Right, and the idea behind this is intermediate serves two purposes. It gives a step up to basics. So after you like you drop in game and you make your basics, and you're like, okay, what's the next thing? It teaches people about subcomponents because they're the first recipes that require subcomponents. So hopefully at that point, people will either decide, hey, I like crafting a crowfall, or B, I don't like crafting a crowfall, and I'm gonna get all of my stuff via vendors and buy it from the crafters rather than being a crafter myself. And it, even then, they'll at least have made one, so they will have at least that first upgrade. To get to the advanced weapons at that point, if you, they don't like it, they'll have to buy it from a vendor, or they'll like, hey, you know what, I kind of like this. I'm going to continue training and crafting versus exploration or maybe even um, one of the basic combats. Right. So it, basically, again, we're trying to expose people to the game such that, that they feel all the systems that we've put in. Right, and it, it worth mention. It is and worth really mentioning that metal billet, for example, doesn't have stats, whereas if you're using a metal bar, it would have stats. But again, it's to teach people about how subcomponents work primarily and to give them that leg up. So all of these recipes require they do require the basic. So you do need to still have that basic weapon, and it will it'll feel like a natural upgrade to that guy. Um, was there any? We're starting at zero experimentation points, not four. Yeah, the starting at four thing, Strathor, is just because we wanted to give you something. Eventually, those things go away. 
Um, and it, or maybe we need to give you one or two. Again, it's four is just in there for now. And actually, I'm kind of curious why I didn't see it. Let me go look at my um, crafting yeah, four. experimentation points. Oh, because you don't have basic experimentation points. Yes, because this guy is not trained. Basically, right now, um, you can see. So, welcome to our new details page. Yes. So, you guys probably haven't seen these stats in a long, long time uh, because we've kind of uh, had them all hidden. But now you can see every single stat that we're granting the character. And you can also see, hey, what does this stat do? In fact, one of my favorite ones is um, you're like, hey, what does the very first stat you see in exploration, subsistence, what does it do? And now we also show you the caps of these things. So if you want to know what your armor caps are, what your harvesting caps are, what your harvesting stamina efficiency is, and why it's capping out, why is my base so high? You know what I mean? Yeah. Now they can answer, you guys can look at all these things and be like, oh my God, this is what they do. And in this case, you also notice that most of these stats are indented. So alchemy is indented underneath crafting basics experimentation. That means that this is a child stat of this stat, which means that any points that you get in the parent stat will trickle down into all of these children's stats. So that's kind of the, the language that we came up for here, which is, hey, what, where am I getting these points from? In fact, I just saw there on the stream. In crafting basics assembly, I'm getting 10 points in the basic, which is trickling down to two points in all of the children's stats. So in this case, experimentation points, as a stout gap, we were actually granting you four in all of these guys. Mm -hmm. We should probably just grant it up here and then just let it trickle down. But that is why, and look at all of the, look at all the goodness. You can come over here into combat stats. Look at all them stats. Look at all them stats. So the one thing that aren't parent stats is the resources. And it was just because it looked terrible. Yeah. And um, we'll have to figure out a way to indicate that these three are not a child of health max. But this is literally your health regen out of combat, health regen in combat. So when you hover over it, you see the full name. But when you looked at it in the list, it just didn't look good so this is more of a organization technique used over here for all of the things all the damage bonuses probably should clean up the damage bonuses a little more this is kind of definitely something that we can, we can break out armor penetration into its own category instead of just a generic offense category you can also collapse these guys um, if you don't want to see those things but there you go all of all of the stats and it's so funny because we've been putting in these descriptions for well over two years. Yeah, you guys have never seen them. And you guys have never been able to see Which them. Is probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> just basically re do another pass to make sure they're a little more, uh, a little more better. But uh... yeah, and we'll have to figure out if we're happy showing that some of these caps are negative values. Looks like all of the uh... yeah, the defenses are negative things. That seems weird. Then we need to do magic with multiplying by negative one or whatnot. Yeah, we have a way to show in the data Absolute table values. We can just invert it. There's like a show as positive only or something column. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. The people who really enjoy the min maxing aspect will be able to look at this. Hey, stealth. Strength and radius other players can sense while you are stealth. And it caps at 150. Okay, so we are back, and I did some mojo. This is what the full recipe book is. If you have trained every single crafting thing available to you, so you'll you'll notice uh, the survivalist recipes popped up. You got you guys remember those? And underneath uh, alchemy, we now have toxins. Hey, the other two talk. Oh, that's right. Uh, this is a um, a wild card recipe. Oh, okay. We're so this right. one recipe okay. can produce all three of... The basic one only produces poison. This one can produce poison, disease, and uh, nature. Nature. However, uh, we should probably go and nerf the basic uh, toxin so it's not quite as good as the one that comes from here. So in other words, make a fourth one? Is that what you're saying, Blair? <laughs> uh, all right. I think I actually did. I threw the data okay. in there. I didn't make the fourth power. Uh, that would actually link up with that guy. Very well. All right, so that's on the to-do list. Um, 
we're gonna go into blacksmithing. So what do we got here? We got armor. We want to make some plate, or do we want to make? So you'll notice the recipes are a lot simpler, and there isn't a lot of raw resources that go in here now. It's primarily looking for uh, three metal sheets, leather padding, and treated steel. And in fact, it's looking for four factory identical steel, which we can't make at this moment. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's one of the things that will be coming soon. 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 So what do we got here? Wow, we've got to get Lars in here to get some new icons for these guys that we just made. Like we have the metal buckles now for leather armor. We've got the metal rivets. Did he make them literally look like rivets? Yes, yes. he did make them look like rivets. Uh, for, this is for the leather non-chest pieces. Scales, which are for the chain armor non-chest piece pieces. And then the rings, which... Why do rings still have three layers? Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it's because uh, they can take the layers. Right. Basically, rings and sheets are the new equivalent, which is why they can take the specialty seal to flip it to a crafted or harvesting stat if you want to. And you can load it up with the layers uh, in case you want to boost the armor capability of it. Right. So basically, since the value, I move the value from the iron and copper requirements from here pushed them down into the sheet layer so now it takes uh, 15 iron 10 ore and 5 ore to make whatever stat flavor you wanted out of this sheet uh, they all take fuel so you're going to start seeing fuel as a more important thing coal is made via you see right here coal is made via burning wood and you, this is a good way to get rid of all of that extra knot wood that you may have so convert all of your knot wood into coal. The quality level of it doesn't matter. In fact, we just we don't even count that in part of the stat calculation. Same thing with for leather armor. Do, 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 do. Leather armor now feels a lot like plate. So it requires hard, two hard leather or three hard leather squares and metal buckles. And the hardened leather squares, hardened leather squares require sinew instead of coal and sinew is made via animal meat so and and that's the exact same thing so you're going to need skinning to make a, a stack of four sinew which will get you four uses to be used in the um, as the fuel component for the leather armor stuff and oh treated leather treated leather is the equivalent of treated steel and that will give you health bonuses in fact i think that is the only stat that you can put on treated steel or treated leather yeah, right now is the health bonuses so that's a way to boost the health on these guys so let's see what else is there anything else that we have in here to I mean, talk I about that, that i think that covers it right i mean we're just shifting around you might you might want to talk about what's different like if they haven't watched the as far as like the uh protections right protections only being on the chest for example correct that's uh that's a pretty pretty major change yeah so the hit locations are now set to hit only chest which means that you only need uh or we only needed to put armor values on the chest which we did with the metal sheet has armor values on it metal plates which are used as the subcomponent for the gloves, helmet, and uh, what piece am I missing? Boots. Boots. They require metal plates instead of metal sheets. So it's two separate subcomponents. And the plates have, I think they have a, do they have a slightly different stat package? They clearly don't have the armor values. Um, whether or not, in fact, I, no, I think we moved we move the extra protection value away from that and actually put the attack stats on the armor and put the protection stats on the weapons. So the alloys got flipped around a little bit. So okay. right, remember that it didn't right, make yeah. sense that it was like, all right, here's even more of this stat. It, it's more of, hey, which attack stat do you want to take on the uh, armor as well as which defense stat do you want to take on the weapon? So... We flipped around some of the stats that you can put on those guys and got rid of some of the weaker ones. Uh, and, uh, and you're going to start seeing that a lot more where we just kind of 
threw out a lot of stats initially to just to, right to see to see what it would do, and people weren't using it, or it's just it doesn't fit with where we've come over the last year. Yeah. So it's like okay, why leave that in there if it's going to be a bad choice mm -hmm. or no one's going to use it? We right. can use that spot for something better. So as new stats come online, we can fill we can fill in like this should go on armor. Uh, Mr. Mark, you want to talk a little bit about the input buffering? Oh, sure. So uh, another another kind of big change we've uh, uh, made for... Um, I probably uh, need some gear. Come up here, 5.4, is uh, input buffering. And so what input buffering is, is um, basically lets you anticipate your next attack and hit the button a split second before uh, the previous attack has ended in order to do the next attack. Right, so you see this a lot in, in actually in a lot of a lot of action games, um, and it's kind of like the the secret sauce that if it's there, it just you know things just kind of feel feel right, and if they're not, then you kind of notice it, right? And so what that will do is it will let you flow naturally from attack to attack um, without having to worry about oh I got to hit the button really fast or you know with with great precision or whatever, basically missing missing your input because it's not it's not looking. You're just, oh come on. Um, and so, at this point now, if you, actually, if you, um, you could probably even, if you have, uh... Um, well, you can keep talking, and I'll, I'll go yeah, ahead and make, make a make basic, some, uh, uh... Make a basic weapon. Um, so essentially the way, the way, uh, the way it's tuned now is, uh, when you hit, and actually see the hit, uh, that's generally your, your, um, your, your cue that you can buffer your next attack. And so when you, when you hit, you can hit your next attack, and it will do that next attack, when the previous attack has ended, um, and so, you know, basically, it it lets you, like I just said, it lets you um, go from attack to attack uh, in a much more fluid and, and, and natural manner that that you're probably more more used to playing or, or, or feeling in uh, in action games, and it just it just feels a thousand times better, right? You can still, I mean, you can still like for your basics, you can still keep the button peg down and just attacks, you know, attack over and over and over. But uh, at this point, if, if you, you know, basically if you, if you hit the button after, you know, you hit, then you're going to perform your next attack, right? So that's, that's effectively it, right? Like- Do you want the keyboard? Sure, if, yeah, if you want. Um, yeah, just, let's just move this on. Right, so I'm gonna go up to this dummy. Go up to you, dummy. Here, dummy. Here we go, where am I at? Kind of like I'm, kind of like I'm playing. So, uh, Actually, you just can't see my hand, so I'll just be like, I'm gonna go click, 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 and as you can see, I'm I'm hitting way before the previous attack is uh, is done, and I'm doing the next attack, right? And this goes even to um, obviously the tray power is two, right? So I can go like click, and I'm gonna go click, and I'm gonna go click again, and I'm gonna go click again. Oops, I oh, missed it. Um, oh, that's right, E. Ha ha! E. Ah, yeah, e. currently the E button doesn't work in our, um, so that, that's why I dropped that combo. Um, but I can go four, and then I can go four, and then I can go four. And I did all those before before the previous ability ended, At you know, after I, I saw myself successfully hit, and I hit each one. And this lets you play with a lot more precision, right? You're, like, you're less worried about, like, you don't have to really worry about, did I hit the button at, at the right time, or, or hitting the button at that perfect moment. Right, and then dropping, dropping. There still is only or, a limited window, though, correct? Sure. It, yeah, there really is, right? I mean, and and sometimes you don't, you know, like I said, it's it's. I, I try to put them so that it is literally at the last hit, right? So if you hit it too early, you're still gonna miss, right? You're still gonna drop the combo basically, but it just gives you a wide, gives you a pretty, you know, um, pretty pretty uh, pretty good um, way to, to to basically just go naturally from 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 attack to attack without having to to really. Um, worry about dropping your combo because sure. you, you you missed you know you missed you you didn't hit it when the last ability was completely over it just it just feels a lot better yeah so. it's one of those feel things i mean mm -hmm. we still continue to work on the feel stuff that uh, that mark and i learned on our previous project which was an action game um and i mean we're going to keep working on that as as much as we yeah. can and there's still things that we want to do it's just fitting them into the schedule and trying to finish the rest yeah. of the game. But I mean, this is a pretty big one, though, right? This is a pretty uh, this this will you know this will make it feel a lot better. It feels I mean just just fighting anything is gonna should feel a lot better because again your your task your attacks flow naturally. You can worry more about the moment to moment tactics um, than did I hit you know did, did I you know 
do I need to spam the button to just do my next attack? Right? You don't need to worry about, uh, you know. Um, so, all right, pretty big improvement. Yeah. So we are happy to continually approve the feel, and since weapon trails are back, the uh, the look of combat. Right. I'm, there's still, like I said, there's still things that we want to do to make it feel even better. Um, I'm not sure why we're not getting any. Uh, we're not seeing any camera shake on that. Um, no, because we don't have uh, camera shake on the basics. Um, well, actually, they, okay, use, there we go. They, okay. they use right. They use mild, right? Okay. The, the mild doesn't work. Yeah, we don't, we, have, we don't have a mild. We need to get get our yeah. We our lowest level of camera shake. Mild basically means very little very little but still discernible it's it's one of the one of the 50 different things that make combat feel good right yeah it's like hit you know the hit jitter and screen shake and uh shader flashes and trails and sound um all these things you don't like any one of them you wouldn't necessarily notice but the com combination of all these things together create a feel you know create hopefully make things feel good Give you the feeling of impact and immediacy, you know, and, that, and that's really what it's all about. You're trying to make things feel feel immediate and present, and make you feel connected to your character and connected to the combat you're you're performing and what you're actually doing, you know. Uh, okay, so the input buffering. How is the attack canceling? Like, if I hit auto attack twice, but I want to use an ability before the second attack, does it cancel when I hit a button? Um, so the trait powers are supposed to take priority over correct. Um, the, uh, the, right. the basics. So anytime you hit a trade power, it automatically has higher priority than a basic attack because we use that for the harvesting. Right. Right. So the when you want to use this is this was also in an effort to make uh, ye old energetic harvest feel better when you are. Oh, I'm not actually in Unity. I'm over here in this thing. Uh, to make energetic harvest feel better as well is when you were chopping away. And chop, chop, choppity chop, and you wanted to, to fire off a power, basically your energetic harvest, and you would actually have to wait for a pause in, in the action. Now, that one will override the next left click because it has a higher priority. And Big Destrin wants to turn Screen Shake all the way off. Can he not do that? Right now, I mean, we. Not, yeah, not right now, but I mean. We don't have a setting for that. A, I mean, that. that Fairly common setting. I would imagine we will probably do that. Okay. Um, I'm going to start scrolling back to... Because I was tabbed out and I couldn't see. Because Jack didn't provide us with another monitor so we could watch the... Uh, <laughs> we could watch the chat. I'm the worst. Uh, Jack, 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 Jack is the worst. Um, okay. He's blaming you. Yeah. Uh, how often... Never your fault. Again, you will definitely notice it when you yeah, use Energetic yeah. Harvest... Also, I think, yeah, definitely non-harvesters only get a half a pip now on a swing, and harvesters actually get a full pip on a swing. Basically, they get, uh, for every two swings, a non-harvester will get a pip, and for every one swing, a harvester will get a pip. That's a new stat that's going in in 5.4. Uh, so with these crafting changes, will we have better access to harvesting materials to craft the new armor? So at some point, we're going to have to put in resource racks in the test server to mm -hmm. so that you guys can test crafting. That's just a thing we don't have yet. We're going to need that because now that we have the division between test and live, we can make test more like a test server when we need it to and basically turn on resource racks or whatever for people who want to craft. But that's something we haven't gotten to yet. It's something we definitely need to do. More bank slots. Can crafters get extra special bags for miss crap that keeps multiplying? Yes, at some point. We have uh, we have a, uh, a design in, and the idea was that the, the harvesters and crafters would be able to get more bag space. And, in fact, you can see the stats. They're probably still they're in the skill tree, and you would see them. Let's see... Will there be a skill tree wipe between 5.3 and 5.4? I don't think so. Or I don't think so. I don't think we... Yeah. So there have been changes to the skill tree 
uh, for armor, but I didn't change, like, the structure hasn't changed. So, um, and I don't know if anybody's even, is it even possible to train that far, this far? Uh, no, might, yeah, I, I think know. at this point some of them have gotten into the uh, blacksmithing. Right. I'm thinking specifically for the armor, uh, like class armor trees, the combat trees. And, okay. One of the things... You know, actually, you could probably, you might be able to show it. Uh, if you go into skill training... So there were some some minor changes, but again... Um, yeah, I need to work on the speed of that. Uh, so now in blacksmithing... So right now, this node actually grants all of the recipes. We're going to start shifting the recipes out. Is that not have... Oh, hey, it's the old salvage line. Uh, we need to shift some of those recipes, like layers, armor layers, which are an advanced kind of thing. We can shift those out deeper into the tree now that we actually can do what we said here, which is grants recipes. That's a thing that we have not been able to do up until a few weeks ago. And then what do you want me to show, Mark? Oh, I mean, if you just wanted to see the, uh, the combat trees, but I mean, it's... it's uh, there's not really much to show. It's just basically re-adjusting... Re, uh, what gets what? Oh, did you do it for armor, or was it for, uh, for armor? Yeah, for armor and the the um, plate mail and leather trees, because before they were assuming that plate, for example, protected against you know whatever, and now everything protects against everything. So um, those have been adjusted to reflect that. Timing is critical on a ranged character when about queuing attacks. I mean, so it shouldn't really matter whether you're ranged or melee. Uh, this is going to make it feel better regardless, right? So, I mean, um, this basically just gives you, like, the wind, like the 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 window, the, like, the buffering window is about between 0.3 and 0.5 seconds, right? So we're not talking, this is not like you, you know, you hit the button three seconds before you're, if you're doing a long attack. It's literally split second before... The, uh, right, so essentially, if so it's, it's not queuing, right? It's like, yeah, queuing yeah. would be like I do the attack and I can immediately hit the next button. And it's going to do do the next attack. That's, that's not, not what it is. That's why we're calling it buffering. It's right. basically it's when, basically on the hit. Right. right. So we have something called a global blackout, and while you are on global blackout, your character is rooted and the client does not accept input. We have something called a power blackout, which is while you're on power blackout the client only accepts WASD inputs and you're not able to initiate another attack. In fact, in the power buffering window, input buffering doesn't do anything because you haven't hit what we call, Mark and I tend to call the uh, the dovetail or, or the client or the open, mm -hmm. the open window. Basically, that hasn't happened yet. So you could mash the button 50 times, let's say, while you're on power blackout, and it will not automatically fire that because you did it in the power blackout window. We've just made the post-hit moment happen right when you hit, the window opens, and you can start uh, buffering for the next attack. Right. It'll accept the next, you know, accept input for the next attack and do that next attack when right. the, the previous ability has ended. And that's why we've called it buffering and not queuing because it, it is it's not, not queuing. queuing. Right. It's, it's basically, it's literally split second. Uh, if the chest provides mitigations and the others are stat sticks, what happens with our mitigations now equal? Does that devalue choosing or changing your damage type? Uh, are mitigations now equal? Um, so there's still there's still a lot of room for variation, right? Um, in that uh, you're basically your layers, right? So you can you can choose to focus on a specific a specific type of um, you know, protection on armor and get significantly more, uh, get a significant bump, or you can be more general and you'll just have general armor versus everything. Yeah, and let's right? talk and about uh, what we did to those other pieces. So, sure. yeah, the, the, I think that's important. When you look at it and you refer to it as a stat stick, it's actually your. There's a significant amount of health baked into those guys now. Right. Right. So if you wear plate armor and you put on the plate gloves, boots, and helmet. I think, did we take 20% out of the player budget and put it into those pieces? So if you are not wearing those pieces... You're missing part you're, of your character. Basically. You're missing a huge portion of your overall effective health. Right? I mean, that, and the health is just baked into those pieces as a, a grade value on the final combine. And you can slightly boost it by using treated steel or treated leather 
on the on those three pieces. So the trade-off there is on leather, the uh, that health value was turned into damage value. So if you want to be a more damaging guy, you can wear the leather pieces with the plate chest. However, you are now sacrificing upwards of 20% of your effective health to turn that into damage. So don't just think of them as stat sticks and no one's going to be wearing them. There's yeah, a there's a huge significant. Yeah, we, we moved a good chunk of the stats into those three pieces. They just don't have armor values anymore because you don't hit those locations anymore. Uh, harvesters versus non-harvesters. How is that being determined by the server? Right now, harvesters, if you have a harvesting discipline loaded out, we're, we're putting all of the, just like we're putting combat stats in the combat disciplines, we're putting harvesting stats in the harvesting disciplines. So if you, uh, basically, if you equip one of those disciplines, then you are basically, in our mind, you're sacrificing a, a major disc for one of those. You're not going to do that unless you really are one of those uh, play styles. Or you're trying to skirt the line, at which point you, uh, that's how you do that build. I mean, uh, what is being wiped in 5-4? I don't know if, um, if we need to do full wipes again in 5-4. We'll, we'll have to talk about that.